a few the brave. Who uh, is making this little session? Mike. Uh, okay. Mike. Okay. Welcome everyone to the session after the night before. Uh, this is a session on simulation. Uh, my name is James Gay, and I'll be chairing the session. And our first speaker is Haslo Akulashat, and he'll be talking about volume maps and implicit boundary representation for smooth particle hydrodynamics. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Um, so, what's this all about? So, smooth particle hydrodynamics, in short, SPH, is a, fluid, a particle based fluid simulation method. So, it's mainly used in uh, movie production so far, but also against some factions in games. So, uh, for instance, uh, uh, NVIDIA Flex Framework uses it. And um, in this paper, we are um, basically concerned about um, interactions between the fluid and um, rigid boundaries, like this uh, static dragon objects or the um, rigid bodies, the ducks that are going around. And um, first, I want to give like, an, an high level um, introduction and motivation uh, for the stuff that, uh, that we will do in the following, and then uh, dive into the map. Um, so here we have a piece of fluid and we put a boundary around it so it doesn't go away and it's just some rigid body in it so it's points of interesting and to simulate the um, fluid we sample it with particles but the uh, next question is how to, um, how to simulate the boundary and the uh, simplest and most common way in SPH is to also sample the boundary with particles um, and also sample the rigid body with particles um, and this way, the boundary, the non penetration of the boundary can be handled by the um, pressure forces. Um, they enforce the hard constraint that the um, density of the fluid, so more or less the number of particles in the per area, is, uh, is constant. And uh, by assigning mass to this uh, boundary particles, um, this pressure force automatically prevents uh, penetration. But this also has some problems. So, for instance, these boundaries get quite bumpy, so when the fluid particles slide over, uh, over these boundaries, then um, we get some uh, artifacts like artificial viscosity or artificial friction that's uh, not desired. And um, further, we need quite many particles uh, to do this, um, even in areas where there's uh, no fluid, and uh, the fluid particles and the boundary particles have to have uh, roughly the same size. So when we change the size of the, of the um, fluid particles, then we also have to resample the boundary with uh, particles. Um, and to overcome these issues, uh, my colleagues uh, Koshi and Benda proposed the so-called density maps approach um, two years ago. And, um, and this uh, doesn't sample the um, boundary with particles, but uh, it uses like, a smooth density function to, um, to represent the boundaries. And this goes a bit outside the boundary and uh, also inside the, the rigid objects. And um, they pre-compute this function and store it on a, on a regular grid, and this can be efficiently queried during runtime. And um, this has the advantage that we can easily represent smooth surfaces. Um, we get rid of this artificial friction, and uh, we have less computation overhead. But uh, in our work, we found that this uh, still has some problems. Um, so um, this works fine when we have very high resolution grid where we store these functions on. Um, but when we lower the resolution, there can be some discontinuous piece in the forces, and um, these can lead to some disturbing visual artifacts, which is not desired. So this can be alleviated by uh, having very high resolution grids, but then we have high memory requirements and high computation times. And uh, in this paper, we uh, improve upon the density in that paper. Um, and uh, solve these issues. So let's get into some math. So when we want to solve uh, uh, simulate incompressible fluids, we uh, have to look at the navi stokes equations, which are on the, on the left. So here we have the incompressibility constraint, which says when the fluid uh, velocity field is divergence free, then uh, the fluid cannot compress or uh, expand. And the second equation is the momentum equation, which says the um, acceleration of the fluid uh, is determined by pressure forces, viscous forces, and body forces, for instance, gravity. And further, we have the boundary condition, uh, which says fluid velocity in uh, normal direction for the boundary is zero, so that the uh, fluid cannot penetrate the boundary. And uh, to simulate this, we need a discrete form, so that we can work with it. And um, we do this by SPH or similar hydrodynamics. Um, 
And so SPH starts with, with the Gerard Delta identity, which has the convolution of some arbitrary function G with uh, the Gerard Delta distribution uh, as the function itself. And um, the next thing that we do is we approximate the data distribution by this um, kernel function, um, which uh, is uh, usually a spline. It looks a bit like a Gaussian, but uh, has finite support. And in the in the limit uh, of this uh, of this kernel radius to zero, it gives uh, the data distribution again. And um, then we discretize these integrals by uh, using the speed sampling points, so that are our fluid particles, and um, so when we suppress this volume integral, we get the volume of the, of the fluid particle, the function value that is carried by the fluid particle, times, uh, times this kernel function, and we, uh, so for each point in space, we have to sum this for all particles that are uh, close enough so that their kernel is, uh, is non-zero. Um, so this uh, can be used to solve the Mary's box equation by plugging this in, and uh, the PDE reduces to a set of uh, on direct differential equations, which can be solved with your favorite time inversion method, but that's not part of the talk. Um, I will uh, focus on how to um, enforce these boundary conditions. And um, as I said before, when we compute the uh, density, uh, then the pressure forces will automatically uh, uh, deal with the boundary, but here we see a problem, so we have a fluid particle, and, um, and uh, the n is the domain of this kernel function, so all the stuff that is inside this kernel function will contribute. And uh, so when the usually particles are inside the fluid, then the complete kernel radius is filled with particles, and it's, um, it's, uh, uh, we can compute density quite accurately, but you see at the boundary there is uh, something missing, um, so we get too low density values. Uh, and uh, this is not desirable. So uh, to solve this, um, we split up the integral into two parts. So the upper part is the uh, fluid, uh, the overlap of the kernel and the fluid, and the lower part is the overlap of the kernel and the solid boundaries. And uh, so the simplest way to do this is to just to add the particles uh, in the boundary, and then we end up with um, with this uh, two sum, so we get one sum over the fluid region and uh, very similar to being sum over the over the boundary region. So this is quite simple, but has the aforementioned problems. Um, so then the, the density maps um, took this different approach. So um, they took this integral from the last slide and um, solved it with numerical integration. So like a gauss quadrature jump. And this has two problems. So the first one is when we solve this, so here uh, we see like one, one particle and this uh, support domain, and um, we have here we have a fixed uh, curvature pattern. So this blue points are the curvature points that are used for Gauss integration. And when we take this particle and move it closer to the boundary, so in, in the boundary we have rest density of the fluid, and outside we have zero density. And um, every time when new uh, integration points enter, then uh, we get like uh, one of these staircases. Uh, that's uh, not very desirable because we have to take gradients of this function to uh, compute forces. Um, so we want something simpler than that. And uh, what they did then uh, is like they did, uh, said, okay, let's not drop this off uh, abruptly, but just uh, extend this by linear function. And when we do so, um, then we, then this uh, staircase is uh, vanished and it's uh, the result of um, The other problem is that this requires a lot of computation, so it can by uh, thousands of uh, integration points per particle, so this is not uh, in the run time. So, uh, but the nice thing uh, about this rigid bodies is their shape doesn't change during the simulation, so you can pre-compute this. And uh, they did this and uh, stored this on regular grid. And because uh, the high number requirement of, uh, of this, they um, um, use this um, elements with uh, cubic interpolation functions, uh, which drastically reduces the, the number required. Um, but this uh, also introduces some uh, some problems as we found out in uh, showing the work in this paper. Um, so um, this can lead to this um, discontinuous gradient because um, there we compute the gradients as um, taking gradients of the interpolation functions, and um, they are not cont uh, continuously differentiable over the um, over the cell boundaries. And um, so this can, can lead to this discontinuous gradients, and they lead to disturbing uh, visual artifacts as well. I will show an example on one of the next slides. And um, 
Uh, this can be alleviated by having very high resolution threads, uh, but then we have very high memory usage, high computation times. And uh, that's where our new idea of uh, volume maps come in. And um, the idea is quite simple. So um, basically, we take this overlap region of the of the um, fluid and uh, of the, the kernel and the, the boundary domain, and we represent it by a single particle. So what does this mean in terms of our integral? So um, when we represent this as a single particle, so then then the density is uh, is again constant, the stress density of the fluid, and um, and the kernel function is, uh, also becomes constant um, because we um, replace x prime with uh, this x star, and this x star is just uh, the position where we base the particle, and uh, we simply base it on the uh, point on this uh, surface that's closest to our full particle, and this can be easily found by uh, using the sample assumptions. That can be also pre-computed. So then everything in integral is uh, constant, and we are, uh, we are left with the um, volume integral, so we just have to compute the volume over this region, and that's where the name volume maps comes, uh, comes from. Um, here we have the same problem as before with the uh, staircase artifacts, but uh, luckily we know how to solve this. So we just extend uh, the density, or not the density, um, but, but here we extend the, like the volume of uh, this boundary a bit uh, outside, so we smooth it, and we don't do this by a linear function, but we do it by a cubic function, um, because this has advantages and we do the normal integration because it's continuously differential over the whole domain. Um, so what we end up with is um, this simple formula for the, um, the density of the boundary. So we just have to take the boundary volume, which we can just query from our pre-computed map, uh, take the uh, rest density, times the rest density and times this uh, kernel function. And the nice thing is uh, it's the same uh, formula as for the boundary particles, just without the sum. And uh, so this can be easy, very easily integrated in uh, standard SPH code. You just have to replace your sum over boundary particles um, with this formula, and you're done. And the nice thing is now we can compute um, derivatives by using the standard SPH uh, manner, where we uh, take derivatives of the, of the kernel function. Um, and by doing this, we get rid of the discontinuities. So the nice thing about this is um, we combine the simplicity of the, of the particle-based approach with the accuracy of the of the density maps approach and the rid of the artifacts that density maps produces for low resolution maps. So to evaluate this a bit more, we um, did this uh, simple experiment. So here we have something like a flat boundary and uh, uh, one particle, and we move the particle um, from right to left inside the boundary, and um, what we got here is uh, the uh, forces, the pressure forces that the boundary exerts on the particle, um, depending on how far you move in. And um, as we see here, for this low resolution maps, we get some some kinks in these uh, in these forces. And um, uh, and here, they, even the forces get negative, so uh, so this force in normal direction, meaning that the, the particle get, doesn't get pushed away, but it gets attracted to the boundary. So this is especially bad. Um, but it gets better when we have more higher resolution maps. So here for this uh, higher resolution, we, we see that, that it's, uh, also the process becomes smoother and we get rid of the artifacts. But uh, for the volume maps, we, or even for this low resolution map, we get um, nice smooth forces. And we also show this in the simulation. Uh, so here's this 2D dam And we see with the density maps low resolution, we get this explosion artifacts. With um, high resolution, it uh, looks nice, and with the volume maps, low resolution, we get visually similar <coughs> results to the, um, to the density maps. Um, next, we compare the computation uh, costs. So, um, this Akinji R is the classic uh, particle based um, boundary handling. Um, so, it has the highest computation costs, and uh, uh, density maps is really a bit faster, and, and uh, volume maps are somewhere in between, but the uh, difference is not very, uh, very drastic, uh, so basically they are uh, comparable uh, at, uh, at runtime. But um, for the pre computation time, um, when we can use uh, lower resolution maps, we uh, see that uh, we get improvements of the, uh, like a factor of uh, 580 roughly to, uh, for the pre computation and the memory, uh, less memory requirement by a factor. But it probably depends on the geometry that you are uh, having. Um, 
So next we uh, compare this artificial friction. So here we have a deformable body that can be also simulated with FPH. And um, when we sample um, with particles, uh, so the, the barrier of particles, we see here that we get some undesired friction. So the cube slides a bit uh, to the left and it rotates also a bit. Um, and when we want to have friction, it's nicer to, uh, to have something that's controllable. So with the volume maps, we don't have any friction, uh, but we can easily add friction uh, and control how much. Um, in this example, um, we uh, showed that this, um, the volume maps approach can be very easily um, combined with other SPH methods. So um, here we have a two-phase fluid simulation. Um, so we have this water phase and this highly viscous uh, slimy material. Um, so this is uh, our um, solver from the view presented last year for viscous materials and, uh, and the method from Zolenthal and colleagues for the two-phase uh, simulation and it's quite easy to uh, combine the volume maps with uh, these approaches. Um, so and here's some more eye candy uh, where we have like a very large scale simulation of this dam in the canyon. Um, where we combined our, uh, the, the volume maps with, uh, with other approaches like uh, turbulence enhancement, uh, so our um, micropolar model to enhance turbulence flow, and uh, yeah, this just uh, works fine uh, out of the box, but it's uh, replacing this uh, sums of the boundary particles with this uh, formula that I showed before. Um, yeah, so to conclude, um, our contribution is uh, the volume maps approach that is an uh, improvement. Uh, over the density maps approach, uh, and the advantages are that we get rid of this uh, discontinuous gradient artifacts. Uh, this allows for lower um, resolution maps and lower um, memory requirements and less pre computation times. Um, and uh, further, it's uh, quite easy to implement it to existing uh, SPH methods. So, for future work, we uh, plan to use adaptive, um, adaptive grids so that we can um, get even uh, rich. Uh, with uh, more memory requirements and uh, to use some better extrapolation methods. Um, so please refer to the paper for this at the of this year. Um, so what I finally want to mention is that uh, all results that I showed here are done uh, with the split dash open source framework. It can be found on our website and on github.com slash interactive graphics slash split dash. And um, it's on the MIT license so um, you can use it free of charge and it's um, uh, implements um, a lot of uh, safety art uh, SDH simulation methods and of course also the uh, density maps and volume maps. Uh, yeah, so thanks for your attention and I would be happy to answer any questions. I think we have time for one or two questions. Uh, I will start off then. Oh, thank you. Uh, so my question is, uh, I noticed you have this very nice Kenyan uh, demonstration at the end, uh, but it would be quite nice to actually have some kind of erosional effect where fragments broke off the canyon. And it seems like your boundary conditions uh, require pre-computation. Could you adapt it to the circumstances? Um. Uh, depends on how you want to handle this uh, breaking, breaking off stuff. So I could think of uh, several solutions. So one is like pre-compute this uh, fracture, and so then, then you have like several rigid bodies, and when the fracture event happens, then you replace the um, the one geometry with like two uh, fracture pieces, and then for those you can pre-compute it. Uh, another way would be to um, also simulate the uh, geometry is a like, very <coughs> stiff, uh, deformable body, and then reproduce stress uh, and uh, use, uh, use the stresses as a fracturing uh, criterion. This uh, would be also possible, but uh, then of course you get some computation overhead uh, because uh, you compute the uh, large uh, parts of the geometry as um, as deformable bodies, then uh, it uh, gets expensive uh, because you get like more particles in the, in the simulation. Other questions? Okay, well let's stack up speed together.